so today I'm just going to use just I'm going to use a few different a couple of different things to try and uh, uh, get my point across. I'm going to use some PowerPoint. I'm going to use our video off Synergy just to work better for my computer and along with the web page just to, to move some X's and O's around to hopefully uh, help everybody out. Uh, I'm just going to share with you some of the principles and our, our key teaching points that we use uh, in our flow slash uh, motion offense. Uh, this is the first year we ran it. Uh, I would say we're definitely in our, our infancy with, with this offense. Uh, there's plenty of room to grow. Uh, and uh, the other positive is our, our players really enjoy running it. Uh, none of none of it's original. Uh, I would say the, it's a hybrid of concepts taken from uh, continuity ball screen, uh, pistol offense, and other motion teams that we've seen or played against uh been fortunate enough where we are we're not that far from new england but we've had a chance to play against some good uh ncaa d2 schools like uh bentley and in st anselms both are uh, perennial powers in ncaa uh division two basketball and they're pretty much pure motion teams so uh still a lot from them also it's been influenced uh by the uh australian men's national team who's uh, I think runs flu offense probably better than anybody. Uh, there's some great clips on YouTube if you ever want to take a look. Um, obviously has some NBA guys, high level pros, very experienced high IQ basketball players who's uh, playing in the same offense together. And it's, uh, you know, it's really great watching that. Uh, we're currently a team that likes to play at a higher tempo and uh, being able to run into a, a, a principal centered offense suits us. Uh, we don't run a lot of sets unless we're coming out of a timeout. Or, uh, or starting a quarter. Um, there's uh, basically the structure in the offense is there to, to establish the spacing. Um, aside from it being an offense that allows our, our players to, to, to learn how to play and make decisions, it's, it's easily adaptable and it's uh, easy to get into, get into from a transition situation, whether you're, you're scrambling out of a, a press offense situation or fast break situation, basically you just have to establish your spacing. Um, the other positive for us is gives us an opportunity to get better defensively. Each day in practice, we're working on defending uh, multiple actions that are unscripted and, 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 and can't really aren't really predictable. Um, so it just helps reinforce uh, defensive fundamentals. Uh, I think ultimately the the options you teach in this offense are what you teach, emphasize, and allow will determine how simple or complex uh, complex this offense can be. Uh, I think you can, it's very easy to, to make it your own, uh, and you can uh, definitely, uh, uh, you know, I think have a lot of fun with it from a, from a coach's perspective. So I'm just going to share the screen now and just bring up a PowerPoint um, and just sort of start with that. So, uh, so our, our general philosophy is we want our players to, to play offense as opposed to run offense. Uh, so we want them to think, make decisions, you know, play within the framework and just figure it out. Um, we're pretty uh, liberal with when it comes to shot selection. Um, you know, we want boring shots, balanced, open rhythm. Um, doesn't matter when it is in the shot clock, uh, as long as the shot you can make at a high enough rate for us to win. Um, so, you know, we'll look at points per possession. Uh, and the example we use is, you know, if, if we're gonna take, we averaged 71 shots a game this year. So uh, if, if you were going to take, if we only had one shot to take and we got 71 of those shots that you just took for the game, could we make enough of those to win the game? Um, so, I mean, I know that uh, every now and then you're going to make a, a, a tough shot, a tough dribble contested jumper. You're not, you're not going to win games on those shots. I mean, you might have to take them at the end of shot clocks uh, and, you know, you'll live with that. But I think, uh, if you're not getting, you know, getting a steady diet of, of, of shots that are balanced, open in rhythm, you're, you're not going to, uh, you're not going to have a whole lot of success. Um, offensively, the, the other thing we feel is nothing is more important than spacing. Uh, I think our spacing really improved this year. Uh, and with that in mind, it, it really uh, dropped our turnovers probably about five or six a game. Um, so we'll, I'll start off talking about spacing and the, and the positions that we play out of on the floor um, so we generally play with uh three guards or even you know I'm just going to call all our perimeter players uh guards uh, and they'll play out of uh, essentially four spots 
um, you know, the deep corners. And for us, the deep corner is a spot basically where your nose would be in line with the side, with the edge of the backboard. Uh, I think there's a big difference between being this deep and being up here where, where the three point line breaks. Uh, it, it really impacts spacing when, uh, when somebody's attacking from the top. Um, the other spots we play out of are the wing, wing spots, which might be a little bit higher at times, uh, which are essentially one step inside from the sideline and along the level of the, the uh, three or top of the key extended. Um, our fours are bigs. Normally our fours and fives uh, will play out of the slots uh, and they could be as high as, as two full steps uh, above the three point line. So again, our one, two, three interchangeable, four, five interchangeable. Um, so it's not totally pos positionless, but I think all of our players have an opportunity to, to post up uh, or, or shoot the three within this offense. Um, the other thing about, about these spots that we play out of, um, our transition spots also match these spots. So I mean, we can we come down and transition and uh, we often won't have, if the ball's coming up the right side, uh, we'll often leave the trail spot open and we'll trail out this wide, even if it's one of our bigs. Uh, we want to leave the middle of the floor open, give the opportunity, the guard an opportunity to attack. Uh, we may run a big to the rim, but he'll probably end up coming up towards the elbow to get ready to get back into a slot position. Um, so ultimately, we're going to establish what we term as a three side and a two side of the floor. Um, so the three side will have a, you know, one of our bigs in the, in the slot position. Uh, one of our guards on a wing, guards in a corner. Uh, you know, there's, as many of you know, there's a multitude of actions you can run on a three side. Uh, we'll go over a few of the things that, that we focus on um, just in a, shortly. Uh, on the other side, then we just, we just term it the two side. Uh, so obviously it's going to be a slot and a wing spot. And um, there's a, some basic actions that we run out of that side as well. Uh, it's important to understand that whenever we run actions out of a three side, we're usually going to vacate one of the guards and move through to the other side. So the three side will turn into a two side and then on the reversal, we're back into a th three side potentially. Um, we don't always leave a three side or one of the guards, one of the two guards doesn't always leave a three side, uh, but we'd like to see that as much as possible. Okay. Um, Excuse me. Okay, so just take you through. I'm just going to take you through uh, some of our uh, just a couple of basic entries to show you how we do establish a two side and a three side. Um, so as we're coming up the floor, just say, I mean, any of our guards could be handling the ball, um, and usually we'll run the first first two or three down to the corner. If the ball gets past the head early into a wing entry. Um, we'll have a guard. The guard will just basically cut through. We'll lift on the other side. And then we'll establish uh, a three side over here. And over here, we're in a, we're in a, a two side where we can run uh, some actions that we'll talk about in a couple of minutes. Uh, but as you can imagine, most teams are going to get into a you know, side pick and roll right away. Um, we'll look at that. We don't often have a whole lot of success scoring on the first side of the floor, and we'll term it first side on the reversal to the second side, another reversal third side. Most of our success or better shots are coming after reversal, so getting to the second, the third side of the floor. Uh, the one thing we want to do is we want to make sure that uh, when we're running action on the first side of the floor, run it well enough and, and, and do give it a serious look to make the uh, the defense honor uh, honor the offense. You know, we'd like to get get the defense thinking about stopping this so that when the ball does get reversed and we start attacking on the second side of the floor, that the defense is moving from help side position into a ball side uh, position. Um, so that's wing entry that gets us into that position. Uh, and another entry we use quite often is going to be just a, a reversal entry. 
and, and we may make this pass to the floor as he's crossing midcourt. Sometimes it's really early. So often what we'll do is if this pass across, it will cue the, uh, cue the three man or whoever the, the two or the three or whichever guard is there to cut through and get to the baseline. Uh, cut through across the baseline to the corner. And now we're just going to step up and we're automatically into a flare screen. So now the one has the, or the four has the option to have a look at the one coming off the, off the flare or the fade. Okay. And then we'll also have action happening over here. So the ball's in the middle of the floor. There's, there's good spacing uh, and, and the floor is spread. Uh, one thing that's really important um, is if, if we're going to use the flare screen, really emphasize having the format to dribble to the action, shorten that pass, which you know produces a chance for turnover. Plus, if the, if the five does slip, it makes it uh, a more accessible pass. Um, Coach, when you when you push ahead and you go right yep. into the two side, are you going ball screen on that strong side most of the time? I know you're going to get to it, but is that basically a step out ball screen all the time, or are you running different action out of that? Okay, sorry, give that to me again. Uh, so when you push, uh, going back right before, when you push the ball up the floor and you went two side, not off the flare. Um, okay, yeah. Okay, yep. Your original okay. transition, so you push to the three. Yeah. Ball goes. One clears out weak side. Are you stepping into ball screen 50, 60% of the time, or how often are you stepping straight into uh, that ball screen there? You know what? We'll, we'll do a variety of things. We, we might come into We might come into a ball screen. Um, right. Or we might come into, we call a pass and chase. Everybody else calls a get. So we might flash to here. Three might throw it to five, chase it. So pass, chase, and then a play out of that. Uh, or we might just pop the five, get the ball reversed, and, and, and really look to attack with this action here. Uh, it, it depends. Um, yeah. We give our guys a lot of latitude with that. I mean, every once in a while, like, we, I might tell them to look for something, uh, but what happens is our guys start to get a feel for who's who they're on the floor with, what their matchup is, and, and what they think they can attack. Um, you know, the one thing that we got better at as the season progressed was not always trying to attack the matchup on the first side. So if we could get the ball reversed and then be able to attack on the second side, like I said, where we've had them go from had the defense go from the help side to the ball side, it was way more effective. Like, you know that you're playing a half-decent defensive team as you come up the floor. Once the defense is set, everybody's loading to the ball. Yeah. And you're not going to really be able to truly attack that matchup right away. Um, so, I, I don't – does that answer your question? Yeah, I know that's perfect. That's exactly what I was asking because I should have okay. asked it right away, but, no, that's great. So, continue on with the flare screen action. That's great. Okay, so flare screen. Uh, you know, so that's that, that basically it gets us into two side, three side. Okay. Uh, we go back again. Um, you know, sometimes we might just have the one dribble up with the ball and just push the three through. You know, and and just and then again we're into the same situation. So we're gonna we're gonna get a two side a lot of the times so to begin with. Um, we're not attacking off that. It's a lot of it's decoy action, and then we're, we're gonna, you know, get it to get it to a three-man side and get it from the first side to the second side, and and a lot of times back to the third side. We don't want to reverse the ball for the sake of reversing the ball or, or running clock. Uh, we just basically want to make the defense move, make the defense shift, and just create enough of an advantage to, for them to attack. Um, so that's sort of the the biggest thing that we want to talk about right there. Um, so those are some of our basic entries. I mean, I think there's, you know, a bunch of different things you could do. Uh, you know, it would be easy to run, a, especially out of, out of this set. Uh, it'd be very easy to, you know, have somebody here and, you know, swing, it, swing the ball across the floor and, and just run a chin cut. You know, I mean, we haven't done that, but, you know, that's something that we may do. And it might be something we, you know, save you know, at, for a certain part of the season. Uh, right. But, you know, with, with this kind of spacing, I think there's there's a multitude of things that, that you can do. Um, so I just. 
Yeah, lots of openings on the backside with that spacing. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, like we I think we're going to be a little bigger this year, uh, but uh, like last year, some of our best post-up players were guards, and and so we tried to take advantage of that at, at times. Um, now, if, if we're looking at our our, our three side actions. Um, you know, we have some, some pretty, you know, the traditional flow offense, ball gets reversed, gets to a three side, the wing's going to back cut to, to either to clear through uh, or, or to maybe post up. Um, one thing we also run is, is a loop cut because a lot of teams are just going to switch that back cut. And uh, I'll, I'll demonstrate that in, in a second and I'll show you one video clip later on. Um, We'll also run a, a wing to corner pin down. Uh, you know, most of the time it's switched, uh, but uh, you know, sometimes you're gonna you're gonna get a a, a shot off uh, just off a pin down. Uh, but I think most of the time, like I said, most of the time it's gonna be switched. So you know, you gotta be able to slip screens, you gotta be able to back cut, you gotta be able to curl cut, uh, and also screen your own man, which I forgot to put in there. Uh, and that's the one thing that we really, you know, watching video. You know, since the season's been over, it's something we really have to get better at is is countering the switch on on the three side if we set a pin down. Um, the other thing that works that can work well is is a corner to wing fade screen. Um, sometimes it's hard to switch because of uh, the person who's guarding the the shooter in the corner or the player in the corner is usually the low man and has to protect the rim uh, and, and take away the roll on, on from the uh, the two side. Uh, ball screen and then there's we also run a little bit of UCLA action every once in a while which which I'll show uh, just a couple of key points uh, for the three side it's really important to make sure the timing of the screening action happens as the reversal pass is being received um, so if, if I'm receiving the reserve reversal pass as I'm pivoting to, to, to look at the act, uh, at, look at the, the two guards who were on the three side, the action should be happening. If I catch it and hold it, uh, it's going to be it's going to be more challenging. Uh, the defense will have been recovered. We'd like to catch the defense as they're moving from help side to ball side. Um, the other thing to understand is if, if you don't get something off that that screening action, then you're going to be into a two man game. Uh, and again, we'll go over that uh, in a second. So I'll just uh, go back to this, this web page and just take you through some of what what we look at for our uh, our, our how we break down some of our uh, our three side actions. So uh, we'll spend a fair amount of time, especially early in the year, playing three on three. Um, so we'll have somebody in the slot wing corner. Um, so we'll we'll establish spacing. Uh, when you see video clips, at least from our gym, uh, a little bit later on, you'll see that we have tape here. We have uh, T taped here as our wide trail spot or wing spot, and then we have tape tape up here. So we try to keep the floor as spaced as possible. Um, so the uh, we'll look. We'll also start. We'll, we'll start with the passer. We, here we have it as the fifth. With our five man, but it, it could be an extra player, it could be a coach. And so what we want to do is we want to time it so that as the ball is coming across, these players are shaping up and getting ready to run their action. Um, when we start to teach this, you know, we will, you know, obviously say, okay, we're, we're going to work on one particular action today, whether it's the pin down, whether it's the back cut, um, whether it's the fade, and, and we'll tell the defend the defense how they're going to, how they have to defend it. Uh, as we move forward, um, we'll end up just going live. Okay. Uh, we might still, you know, uh, guide the defense and how they're going to play things. Um, but I, we also want our guys to understand how they're supposed to play people. You know, if, 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 if three can't shoot it and we said you can't switch and, and two's going to set a pin down, well, we're going to gap it all day. Um, and so that way our, our three man has to figure out what he has to do. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about how you might want to, you know, define roles and positions within the offense a little bit later. So, anyways, getting back to that, as the ball's coming across, if we're into a pin down, two's getting the angle, pr 
probably going to set it in about there because the as the ball was the two man action was happening over here, three's man probably had to have at least a foot in the paint, beware of the roll, uh, set the screen, and we're ready to come up and play out of that pin down action. If it was a switch, a lot of times let me just get. But if, if, if we think there's going to be teams that are going to switch it, then a lot of times we, we'd like to just seal this guy right there. If this guy lifts, you know, we should, we should have a shot here. Now, if this guy can't shoot it, obviously that doesn't work so well. Uh, but off the pin down, uh, you know, we'll look at a, a straight cut. Okay. We'll look at the three curling. And sometimes we just may force a curl. Uh, we'll work on things where, Okay, whether they're switching or not, I'm going to come off, I'm going to curl, and I'm going to get a piece of this guy. Okay, I'm not really looking to score as much as I'm trying to get half of his body and just to get him to knock him off balance, get him to open up a little bit. And in that timing, you know, four might be going straight into a, into a two-man game where two's going to peel back off of that, three can go through, and we're getting, we're getting a handoff into that situation right there. Fork, uh, fork in space, uh, we can attack. If not, we can just move the ball back. Uh, but sometimes we, you know, I think we find we have a lot of success if we, when we're running force curls, um, especially when teams are jamming up the middle. Um, obviously, you can still back cut at any point, uh, especially if, if, you know, if, if, the, if the pin down's coming and I'm not a great shooter, they're just going to gap up the middle on me and they're going to allow that catch. It's, it's non-threatening. So I have to be thinking back cut where I can you cut and maybe post up, okay, or curl. Um, Coach, do you call those reads, or do you guys know like Tom? Tom doesn't shoot it well, so he's going to curl or back cut ninety percent of the time. Like guys get used to each other, or do you let them know? I'd prefer you to make this cut or this cut. Well, one thing we started doing uh, early in the year last year was, and I'll, I'll get to this a little bit later, but I'll, I'll talk about it right now is we kind of label guys. Um, you could be a, a, a cutter, a spacer, or a creator. So, you know, if, if you're a guy who's, who's not a, you know, if you're a average to, to below average shooter, um, you know, we don't want to, you know, we don't want to pin our hopes on, on you being able to, to make three point shots to win us a game, you know? Okay. So, in those situations, then you know we're gonna want we're gonna want that guy to to really, you know, be more of a screener, and 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 be more of a back cut and curl guy than a guy who's coming up and, and catching it right here, you know, because yeah. you're not going to be a threat. Now, if if you're a guy who can you know come off this and then and play off a ball screen and get into a lane and make some make a decision, then 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 we'll allow that. Okay. Um, you know, so if, if you know, if, if, if the guy was a spacer, so like, just say that number two, let's say, let's say our two man, say three, three's not a great shooter. Okay. But two can't, you know, so we might have this, okay, I'm going to set the screen. These guys could be, they could be communicating like earlier in the year, especially when we're doing it more in practice, as the two man action was happening over here, these guys were having a conversation. You know, they're almost telling each other what right. to do. Here, I, I'm going to, here, I'm going to, I'm going to get you curl. Because he knows yeah. that when you curl, I'm going to pop and I'm going to get the shot. Uh, yeah, and we kind of makes sense. We went away from uh, enforcing that or not or, or emphasizing that a little bit. Just you know, as you get it, you know, earlier in the season, you spent more time on on those types of things, and then as we got further into the season and more game prep and, and things like that, we got away from it. Um, I'm just watching video at the end of the year, I see like you know we were better at doing some of those things early on, and, and we're we're still pretty good in practice but it you know obviously it doesn't always transfer to the game and and that's that's where we want to get to it's like i said earlier like i think this is the first year we've run this this offense i think it's going to take a couple of years before we really get good at it and i think you know if if, if we can if we'll stay with it and and i think i believe we'll see results uh and the yeah. communication also carries over to other parts of the game 
So, so in the pin down, you, you know, you've, you've got the back cut, curl cut, straight cut. Uh, obviously, if there's a pin down and, and you know they're switching, you've got to slip into the middle and we'll get that every now and then. And that's, you know, as I said earlier, that's something that we have to definitely have to get better at. Um, you know, for the fade, a lot of times, and I noticed this in practice, we got, uh, you know, we got a lot of shots off this in practice, not so much in the game. We stopped doing it later in the year, but, you know, cutters, this guy, this guy, if you're, if you're a spacer, you got to be talking to the other guy. You've, you've got to be telling him the screen for you as, as well, you know, because I think if you can get, as the ball's coming across, if you get that there and space this guy down, you're going to get that shot a fair amount. Um, but the ball's got to move quickly and, and the timing's got to be really good there. Um, now, like I said, so we'd, we'd like to look for that shot. We'd like to look for the slip inside. And, and this is where, you know, our guards get as much of an opportunity to post up as, as our bigs do. Um, you know, having said all that, I mean, these are all really simple concepts, but really hard to get good at. Uh, and they just just take a little bit of time. Um, and you, you, you know, guys rep these every day, Coach? You rep your three-side uh, and two-side most days? Uh, you know what? We did that pretty much for the whole first semester. Yeah. Um, and then as we got into the league and, you know, we stopped doing it as much as we did early on. Um, yeah. And the one thing, as the year went on, our spacing was still good. Um, that never, we never stopped emphasizing that. I just realized, you know, watching the video later on, we never got as much off the screening action on the three side as I would have liked to have gotten. Right. Um, you know, uh, so the state action, and the one other thing that we ran is, and this is stolen from the Australians is, uh, you know, just some of the UCLA action. You know, sometimes what we'll do is, uh, and I'll, I'll show it on video as, as the ball is coming across, we'll just slide the guard into the elbow. Okay. Blast the three out of the corner. Okay. And so as, so three is lifting as four is catching it, pass is made. Uh, and then you just go straight into a UCLA cut. And, and if you're not running it all the time, I mean, obviously if, the unpredictability of it is, is which allows you to get an easy basket every now and then. So we've run it to get that. We've run it to get this guy popping where he's, he's got a shot every now and then. Uh, and if, if your, your other big can read that situation and can slide in and just create an angle where he can catch the ball and go off in a middle ball screen. Um, I think that's, that can be pretty effective. Uh, you know, we had, we're getting better at this. Uh, the one thing we struggled with a bit this year is what we wanted to do is if we came off this middle screen here, we wanted to give five a spot to roll. So we would go down, go down the lane line here. And the guy who made the UCLA cut, we wanted him to basically get into a short position and, and, and maybe get out to the dunker spot so that when the two came down, five could roll here. Uh, so you got basically a one side pick and roll. There shouldn't be anybody there to pick them up if this guy stayed with the three. Okay. So you had the option there, the option there, and the other man was spaced out here. Didn't quite get there. Hopefully that's something we can get back to, uh, or get a little better at, um, the following, uh, this, this coming season if we, if we ever get a chance to play. Um, so now just, uh, Going back to uh, go to the two side actions. Um, so basically, you've got side pick and roll, side ball screen. Uh, you've got a DHO with the slot to the wing. Uh, and then you've got basic give and go where you can reverse the ball to the wing and dive to the post. Or uh, you can throw it to the wing and then and get it back from the wing and, and get into a little bit of a pass and chase situation or a get situation. Um, so we'll do different things. Like we will, we'll work on them in, in shooting drills uh, and we'll work on it uh, two on two, three on three. We'll work on all these different types of actions. Um, you know, and we, a lot of times we'll talk about, we might do something where say so you're going to have to run repeat action before you can attack. And for us, repeat action is uh, coming off one way, 
and then uh, heading back to where you came. So. Okay, so if we're on, we're on a two-man side, um, you know, so obviously if, if we're going pick and roll, I'm just going to start with a pass there. Uh, I think one of the key things that, uh, that, that makes the two-side effective is this five-man having the ability to attack the elbow first. Uh, whether, whether it's going to be a, a, a dribble handoff where he dribbles at the elbow and then busts, uh, bumps out, or whether he he makes a pass and and, and makes the ball screen. Um, if this guy's being defended and he just chases the arc or follows the arc, I think it's really easy for him for the defender to jump out and, and jump switch it, trap it, and, and blow things up. So really, what we want to do is we want to make sure that the guy who's being guarded by our big has to you know, honor the fact that the five could dive to the post, dive to the rim. So he has to be below his man and between him and the basket, and then he can come into this action. And it, it makes a huge difference. So on the ball screen, I think it just, you know, it allows the guard to maybe come off the screen before the five arrives. You know, and one of the things we talk about is, is trying to attack away from, and I think everybody talks about trying to attack away from the screener's defender. Um, so if you can get into a situation where this guy's late, you have an advantage, maybe you can attack. Um, the other thing about the, uh, the handoff, if you're going into a DH or a dribble handoff, okay, if you can get this guy below you and you can attack him, only you know, really know when you're going to bust out. So if you can bust out with the dribble to there and he's below you, not only do you give your guard a, a, a a little maybe a little more space to attack but when he's coming off here he's going into the middle as opposed to you know coming into this, this situation where he's headed more towards midcourt okay yeah, so, so he's in more the, north he south a, that's right he's, he's just got he's just got a better angle to attack and you know i think with anything if you can get the ball to the nail i mean everybody's defense is you know don't let the you know protect the nail Okay, so here, if you can get the ball to the nail now, you've got, you know, great angles to get that pass. You, you obviously you have your spacing over here, and, and we'll do some different things coming off that action. Like we may cut the wing guy. We may back cut the corner guy. depends on, on who it is, and some of our guys just naturally do it. Um, but that's, like, that's one thing I've really found is, is, is a huge detail. This guy cannot just follow it. He's, he's got to get to the elbow, take those, like, a couple of hard steps, make them honor look at the cut to the basket or the drive to the basket if he's setting up the DHO and then go from there. Um, if we're in a situation where uh, we have the ball here, let's just, I'll just, I'll mention this quickly. If this is our three man, like, you know, I, I talked to, I talked a little bit about having a guy who's a cutter talking a little bit about a guy who's a spacer. And then we also had guys who were designated creators. Um, you know, not everybody on our team did we want using a ball screen. Um, I think you definitely need, you need some ball handling ability. Uh, you need some decision making ability and, and, and most teams aren't going to have three perimeter guys on the floor all the time who, who can do that. Okay. And, and most coaches don't want that. Um, so we'll really try to emphasize in that situation, uh, you know, throwing the ball back to the five where you can take the handoff because I think it's much easier to take a handoff than to use a ball screen off the bounce. Uh, this also may set up a back cut where we can go into the post, especially if you have a matchup that you can attack. Okay. Uh, also, it can be just a fake handoff. And if you have the right big, you can fake it and go. Uh, those are some things that we've had, we've had some success with. So, uh, let's see, you know, getting back. I'll get back to, so repeat action. So we just call it repeat action. Um, we get into a screen, three has the ball. 
irrelevant where this guy is at this point. Uh, but if, if the on-ball defender goes under, okay, we're, we're going we're gonna to repeat the action. Uh, sometimes we may even run it a little higher to encourage them going under just so we can turn the corner and come back and go back downhill. So repeat action could be a bunch of things. I mean, we might throw it to the five, come off, take the handoff, come to here, have him flip, and come back off a ball screen. Okay. Uh, we might come off a ball screen, throw it back to the five, and chase it into a handoff. Um, so we try to work on some of that stuff, two on two, uh, three on three. And again, we'll emphasize it with some, with some shooting drills just so that we get used to the footwork, timing, and, uh, and, and the guards and, and bigs uh, working together. Coach, there's a couple of questions here. Um, we'll save some till you get the video up. But just on the two side, when you go to that um, either dribble handoff or ball screen action on the icing, yeah. um, they're yeah. asking, uh, how are you guys combating that? Are you slipping it? Um, are you rescreening on the ice? Do you just want to talk about how on the two side when you see ice what you're doing? Okay, uh, we'll do we'll do we'll do a couple of things. Okay, so we got we got ice here. Uh, actually, you'll actually see something in the video where it happens. Okay, so if we're gonna let's just that's okay. Okay, so if we've, we've got this guy iced and this five's in a drop. Uh, we might take a dribble down and, and, and just try and look for the soft spot there. Uh, we might take a dribble over, okay, pull the defender. I mean, and that's, I think that's, you know, the other thing is yeah. you got to move the defense before you use the ball screen regardless. Um, so sometimes we'll, we'll take the dribble down, move it, and then we'll chase it. Okay. I think that's, that's a simple counter that, that we like, uh, at least that our guards like to use. I would say that's probably the main one instead of, you know, really fighting, uh, you know, fighting to get over the top. And, you know, obviously if, if you're going to fight with the dribble, the guard pushes you above the screen, you haven't gained an advantage. So I think that the easiest way is just the, the pass and chase situation. Um, Perfect. I would say that's the one we use the most. No, that's great. Um, so just getting back to uh, just defining roles. Um, so, sorry. Okay. So, you know, so basically, you know, uh, every, everybody's got a strength. And, and I think, like I said, the cutter's usually a, not, not your best shooter, but hopefully a guy who, who can, who can learn to, I think the other thing is you got to try and sell that everybody can score within this offense. And if you have guys who can score in different ways, then, you know, you're, you're way better off. So generally we might say, guys, if, if the best thing you do is cut, you're not a great shooter, then we're going to label you a cutter. Uh, you may or may not be use, uh, encouraged to use ball screens. Um, it, it depends on, on the guy and, and it'll change. Like I was, we had a zoom meeting with our guys today and we're talking about some things and, and talking about these concepts and, one of the guys on our team last year who was purely a spacer. By the end of the year, he was a guy who I would say would be, I'd label him a creator, a guy who I was comfortable using ball screens and, and could make a decision. Um, but cutters are, are, you know, hopefully will take some pride in how they set screens, being able to slip screens, be able to back cut, be able to get something, you know, get, get some paint scores, especially from a guard position. Uh, spacers are pretty obvious. Uh, I think we want, we want to make sure that you're really looking for spacers. How can you screen and get them the ball? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, communication is huge. Uh, and so, you know, it's also about knowing your personal. Your forwards and bigs and guys who are distributing the ball from the top, they have to be aware of who they're playing with. You know, if I know that I, I've got a shooter on the wing and i got a, 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 a cutter in the corner, uh, then I got to be anticipating that they might, I might be seeing a, a, a fade screen to get that guy a shot. Uh, it's, it's also knowing who's hot as well. Uh, you know, I don't think most teams aren't going to have too many guys who are creators. If, like I said, most teams have a limited number of guys who are really truly comfortable with making decisions. Um, and so I think that's, that's a good way to label it. I think you can use other terms. Um, I think if, if you can, you know, there's, there's rooms, there's room for development throughout this offense, but I think ultimately 
when it comes down to you want to put guys in a position where they can do what they do best. And you might be just a cutter this year, but next year you might be a, you know, you might be a creator. Okay. You might be a spacer this year, but you actually might be able to cut a little bit next year. Um, and I think within this offense, I think everybody finds one or two things and maybe two or three things that they can do well. Uh, even if, and if they just do those things well, and, and not everybody's doing the same things. I think it gives you a good mix, and it makes it harder for you to be uh, to be scoutable. So I'll just go through uh, just some some clips uh, just off of Synergy. What's our time? I think it should work out okay. Um, yeah, we got about ten here, Coach, and then some questions at the end if you got okay. time for them. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So this is just basically. So we start off with a reversal entry here. Just a second. Bring this back. Hopefully it's not too choppy, but I'll just slow it down a little bit. So we got a reversal entry. So, you know, the ball is going the other way. We run the fade screen. It just ties up the defense. Uh, really big on having the middle of the floor open. Um, you know, we get into a ball screen here. Okay, let me just get up to the screen. It's easier to see. Sorry. Okay. My assistant coaches are way better at this. So you get it's all into, good. We, come up. we can see it. <laughs> okay, good. So we come into a handoff, okay? But he's going to back cut the handoff, okay? And I mean, we don't get a, a chance to attack off that, but that's okay. It's just It's creating movement and it's creating spacing, okay? It comes off here. You know, you don't have to create off every catch. So there's, there's nothing really here. There's no point giving it to this guy in the post here. He's, he's a bunch of feet off the lane. Ball gets reversed quickly. You can see here, this is where we kind of like the space to. Uh, this is probably a couple strides up. Anyhow, the ball gets reversed quickly, uh, you know, and as that's happening, we're into our screening action. Now, this is probably on me coming into this game plan. I should have been talking about sealing in this guy. And this, this guy this guy would be a spacer. So if, if we can step in here and screen this, this guy coming up here, that's going to be an open three. And if they both chase out, then he's going to end up with, with a layup right there. Okay, as, as it turns out, he comes off it, he comes off with pace. We even pull up a little bit short on, on the dribble handoff. Okay, our big rolls hard. Okay, finishes, gets the score. I mean, this offense can look really good at times. Okay, again, reversal entry, space, get a quick reversal. Okay, guard does a good job of selling opposite. Okay, rejects the screen. We like that. Okay, so that was kind of the ice coverage. It's kind of harder to ice it up there anyway. Get it lower, it's certainly a lot easier. Okay. Guard's going to kick it back for the open three. The other big isn't just standing, he's diving to rebound or diving to, to maybe catch a, catch a pass if, it, if it's there. Coach, with your uh, DHOs and screens there on your offense, your guys are spaced mm -hmm. really well. Do you have a certain area you want those screens set uh, in terms of like heel on the three point line or just bottom of the defender wherever they are on the floor? bottom of the defender. I mean, like those are, you know, especially as I watch film preparing, it's like I look at the details that we can really tighten up and I have a list of about uh, 17 things we can tighten up, but, <laughs> right. um, you know, and that's definitely one of them. I mean, like I said, I think, you know, you want to make sure that or you want to try and encourage everybody to go over things as much as possible. Um, so here's just an example of really, Sometimes this, you know, it's kind of the same thing as a pistol offense. What Dan Martin talked about last night. You know, sometimes it can look great, and sometimes it can look awful. You know, so we come down here, we don't really, you know, challenge the defense. Like they're, you know, this is a shoot over here. We haven't made this this guy, the low man, come over at all. We haven't. We keep it high. We don't put any pressure on the defense. Okay, so we don't force the guy to to help to the rim. He's got a foot in the paint. As the ball gets reversed, deal with the switch well. Because our spacing isn't good, there's not a slip opportunity, you know, and then just, you know, we're getting pressure denied, spacing's bad, you know, we end up, you know, being hesitant with everything we do and and it, it ends with a, you know, a, a tough shot, a shot you're not going to win games with. You know, here, do a better job, come off, okay, the screen's probably a little lower, uh, but keeps the dribble, hesitates. Now, because he's a threat to attack, engages this guy here, okay? 
maybe took it just a little bit low, but regardless, we rotate behind. Okay, you know, catch the ball here. And essentially this is our elongated three side. Uh, our guard here is, is, is thinking about sealing in. Uh, the other guard doesn't come up, so he pops. Uh, and, and this is what's really crucial here is what you're gonna see is you're gonna see our guard, we're gonna see the ball screen happen here. Um, he's gonna reject it, but this is, this is one of our spacers. And instead, of, if, he, if he stays in this position, this basket doesn't happen. He does a great job of, of sliding down deep to the floor. This is a good, good spot to see where, where our spacing, our floor tape is down. So we got a trail spot right here, okay? This is, we wanna be this deep in the corner. Okay, and actually we've moved these spots back out a little bit. Um, we put the tape down in training camp. Nobody made us take it up, so we just left it there, even if it doesn't look beautiful. Uh, it's functional, or functional, that's more important. So anyhow, uh, you know, our guard does a good job of setting up the screen, so it's opposite, rejects it, okay? He, uh, you know, this guy is spaced as deep as he can be, doesn't allow the guy to help off the corner. Okay, gets to the rim and helps charge circles too late. Okay, so again, we're in a situation here. Uh, you know, we probably could have we could have done this in the in that you know and the bad possession. We're in a situation where you know we're playing a team here that you know on every back pet they're just going to leave the wing out there, okay, and and switch with the guy who's at the rim. So really what we want to do here is either we're going to seal in this guy and bring this guy out or we're going to we call a loop cut now so and and usually we'll this can be in a scout or it can be in a read but if we if we if we're really conscious of what we're doing and we know we're running a loop cut uh this guy here can run out to the corner okay this guy will will dribble at the wing and and 15 here would just make, make a couple of hard steps towards the basket okay and then loop straight up to the top um, and what we'd normally get is, you know, this guard staying down in the corner, which keeps that man down, at least creates maybe a closeout situation or at least an open shot or at least a closeout situation. As this guy's waiting here, if, if our forward stops, can front pivot off his, off, his, off his right foot, throw it back to a guard. He's probably got a wide open three, and we did get that shot a bunch of times this season. As it turns out, he throws it here back to the guard who lifted uh, and we end up getting into a middle ball screen anyhow uh, and he's able to score you know the guard versus the big I like okay. that giving it so a different we, look yeah I, I think it's you know the thing is if, if you're going to run a back cut you don't want to just run to where the the defender is uh, and I think as you get more comfortable in this offense you can you're able to break in and out of it uh, at different points and i think that's that's really significant i think then you're you're playing and, and you're not paralyzed um anyhow here we're expecting pressure we're sort of in our, our press offense it never really materializes so we end up getting one of our off guards and this sort of initiating the offense he flips it back to our four man we're not really into anything but you know what we're going to get to our spots Okay, we're going to make sure that we have a reversal. We don't hang on to the ball too much. The ball goes from one side of the floor to the next. And, you know, we're into our situation. Again, this is this was a great thing about doing this clinic. I just realized how, how much of a difference it would have made if we would had screened our own man a lot more often. Because right here, again, would have been a great opportunity to screen nine, and we got a shooter in the corner. Um, you know, as it turns out, you know, our guard catches the ball on the run with some pace. Okay, guard goes under on the screen, and if, if he stops here and pulls up, he's probably it's probably a great shot for him. Uh, probably takes it a bit too deep, but you know I think if you can get the ball into the middle of the lane, like I said, uh, I think it affords you some good opportunities. Maybe he could have kicked it out, but anyways, he takes the shot, it doesn't go in. Uh, but we we're able to flow into offense fairly quickly. Uh, one thing we do, uh, and I didn't diagram it, but we'll use an elbow screen. Well, sometimes we'll use it, and sometimes we'll just use it as a decoy. So here, the sevens at the elbow just, you know, takes a little bit of pressure off the guard. We end up getting just a handoff, okay? Get it, 
reversed, pretty innocuous, but we've engaged those three guys over there. They've had to at least, you know, be there, match up and play some defense. Uh, you know, from there, get the ball reversed and we're going into our two-man game. Okay. Um, and, you know, we, we talk about rejecting screens and, and, and going away from the big defender as much as possible. So it's nice to see our guards do it. Um, but what you're going to see is, you know, we have, we have a guy cutting in here, probably setting a screen. But our, some of our bigs have learned to seal in on penetration. And, you know, we talk about it, but just by playing, they've, they've picked up on things and they've just figured it out. So a good penetration, get into the lane. Okay, this guy's communicating, 50-year guy, we're going to miss him. He organizes a lot of things on the floor. Uh, anyway, so he sees this guy's open, and he's getting ready to, to seal in. Got his teammate. Would have been a, it was a good shot, but it was a better shot because he was able to, to seal in the guy. Uh, you know, we run some simple little wrinkles. Um, so here's just that UCLA action we talked about. It's not executed particularly well as far as the angle of the screen, but uh, it's hard to see, but our guard is going to be on the wing. He's going to move into the elbow uh, on our, on our bigs catch. Uh, doesn't have the angle, but he's going to end up getting a rip off of a ball screen. So he just slides in wing entry. You know, we'd much rather have him underneath the big so we can have a look at that primary cut. Uh, regardless, you know, our, our other, our other forward sets a good screen here. Um, and kind of gets him going downhill against the big uh, where he has an advantage. Um, so sometimes with, with that UCLA action, our, our guys will, will call that themselves. Um, they may run it after one reversal. They may run it after two reversals. Like they'll just, you know, they'll, they'll talk to each other and say, yeah, let's go run the UCLA on the third side. You know, so sometimes they'll be patient enough to get the ball reversed. Uh, and, and wait and get that. Uh, you can also, we also, every now and then, and we didn't run this, we probably didn't run that every play, or sorry, every game, but every now and then we'd run it as a set where we just swing it and out of a timeout here, you know, it's just, you know, they hadn't seen it. It got us an easy basket at a, at a key point in time. Um, you know, we'll do some different things, especially other timeouts, like just kind of a loose horn set you know, where we're just running our, our, our flow offense. I think there's, you know, you can start it a bunch of different ways. You know, so they're basically passing to a ball screen, getting a shot. Um, Coach, we got about one minute here, and then I got to take a few questions before we wrap up. So we'll okay, show good. Yeah, I just got to, yeah, I've got two couple more left. So uh, one thing our guys started to do is, is figure out how to get the ball inside, um, you know, without us, calling anything you know so here you know our, our point guard likes his matchup it's a handoff okay we're going to get it reversed our guys kind of know what's going on we get it swung he ends up posting up out here i think you know we watch this watch this on film with our guys this is our last game of the season so obviously haven't watched any video yet uh from that you know so our, our guard has found a way to get the ball into the paint or, or get get a post up okay he, he releases out. We prefer that he seals at the rim. And if he does that, he probably gets a basket. Uh, he ends up you know, missing pretty significantly, but I mean, I think the kid had 20 points this game, so I'm not going to say too much, but, you know, but if he catches it in the paint, he's scoring for sure. Um, but it's just, our guys started to figure things out at the end of the season. Uh, they start to look at, okay, recognize switches. Okay. Recognize mat recognize matchups. They can attack. So they know, the handoff's going to happen here. They know there's no big deal. They're, they're, you know, we're not going to score off the handoff, but we might get a switch that we want. Um, you know, so you're going to see that the ball gets reversed. The guys are communicating. Having look goes back to the other side. You know, our forward's pointing. There's a matchup we want to attack. Uh, really pleased with our guard here. He doesn't try and throw this tough pass. He takes a couple dribbles to improve his passing angle. Okay and gets it to a matchup we could like and, you know, scores a, a big basket in our league final. Um, so I think that is it. That's so. probably good. We're getting, we're getting tight on time coach. <laughs> Cause okay, good. I was good, loving, perfect, I was loving, good. I was loving the videos myself. So I'm going to fire a couple of questions that people had. Okay. Um, we got okay. about two minutes here. Um, okay. One of them, uh, 
advice on high school teams running this um, where they would lack maybe creators and shooters? Um, would it be applicable for high school teams to run it if you had mostly um, slashers? Uh, yeah, I think I, th I think so. I mean, I just I think you want to limit options and and maybe emphasize things like curl cuts and back cuts, and uh, yeah. you know, and and break it down. I mean, okay. break it down three on three, four on four, two on two as much as possible. I mean, I think um, you know for years everybody's run it with the back cut like forever. I mean, it's been the offense of basically from 2010 on. You know, probably been with what used to be the flex. Um, early on, one of the viewers was asking, with the perimeter-based kind of five out, four out look, what's your offensive rebounding rules with this uh, offense? Uh, we, we send our three, four, five to the glass uh, and send one of our guards to the foul line and our safety back to midcourt. And, you know, I mean, obviously there's certain situations. If I shoot a corner three, I'm taking my first two steps are going to the basket. Um, but if, if the ball's not coming back to me, I'm sprinting back to midcourt. Um, our defensive transition wasn't awesome this year, and part of it was because we weren't getting to rebounding spots consistently enough. Uh, and that's something we want to get better at next year. Okay. We'll give you one more here before I sign out. Um, okay. Most essential skills uh, for your forward. So the question is, can all your players shoot the three ball um, to run this offense, or can you have some of your forwards not be able to shoot? I think I think you can. I think it makes it easier if they can. I think they're probably going to have to play uh, a little closer to the basket. Yeah, I mean, I I think that's you know as as Dan Martin said yesterday. I think once you get past the high school level, the one thing that limits a team's offense is how many guys they can put on the floor that can shoot the ball. Um, right. I mean, you, you can run it. I mean, it it's just it certainly makes it easier when you have five people that can shoot the ball. Uh, but we like we didn't have like our our five men couldn't shoot the ball. And this year, I'm like, you know, not every guy on our team is going to be a three-point threat. Okay. 